So Luke chapter 5, reading from the first verse down to the 7. I'm going to give you a few um, passages of Scripture. And uh, you, you're going to need to take your notes today. <coughs> and um, this series is going to come to us in three categories. I'm going to talk to you about what is partnership. Because we're talking about partnership for greater performance. We said this is our year of performance. We're performing on a whole different level. And Pastor Johnson helped us with that on last week. We're going to perform at a greater level of excellence. Whenever God puts you, whenever you're in the place of God, you are to perform with excellence. This is your year of performance because if you want God to perform, you have to perform. All right? So we're talking about partnership for greater performance. And this message is going to come, or this series is going to come to us in three categories. We're going to talk today about what is partnership, the benefits of partnership, and what hinders good partnership. You don't want to miss, th miss this series. It's going to bless your life for the rest of your life. I think this is going to be a part of my book that I'm doing on a transformed leader. Luke 5, reading from the first verse. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God. They pressed, they pressed about him, who him, Jesus, to hear the word of the Lord, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had given up had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's. He got into Simon's business. Simon and the, or Peter and the apostles were fishermen. And he got into their business. You get Jesus in your business, you'll be a force to reckon with got into his business, and asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down, and he taught the multitudes from Peter's business. That's what your business, you who are in the kingdom of God, that's what your business should be about, helping others to get close to God. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Let down your nets. The instruction was to let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. God tell him to let down the nets, plural, and he, he let down the net, singular. And when they had done this, he caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. You could imagine if he had just obeyed God totally and let down the nets instead of letting down the net. Look at your neighbor and say, don't you limit God in this season. When he tells you, do it, do it all the way. So they singled to their partners in the other boat to come and help him, and they came and filled both the boats. So that they began to sink. Ecclesiastes 4, reading from the ninth verse. Ecclesiastes 4, this is the most reading of the word you all had for the month. Ecclesiastes 4, reading from the ninth verse. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls. For he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But it's important for you to be careful who you're laying with. Because the old folks said, if you lay with dog, you wake up with fleas. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. Watch this now. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Mark 2, 
5, 3 through 5. Mark 2. Four men arrived carrying a paralyzed, reading from the New Living Translation. Four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. How much men? Four men arrived. Jesus is in this house and he's teaching. The house is filled. These friends want to get their paralyzed friend to Jesus. The Bible said these four men got together and they lift their friend on the roof. Watch what he says here. And they couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in the front of Jesus. God's going to give you those kind of friends. Okay, God's going to give you those kind of partners. Seeing their faith. Not the paralyzed man's faith. He saw their faith. And Jesus said to the paralyzed man, he saw their faith, but he spoke to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven you. Take up your bed and walk. Partnership. Partnership. We're talking about partnership for greater performance. In our book, Living the, uh, In It to Win It, one of our points we shared in, 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 in our book, In It to Win It, that God never put two persons together to fail. Whenever God put two persons together, he put two persons together to succeed. And if you're not succeeding, that means you're not... Your partnership is not functioning at the highest level. Someone is not doing their part. But God never put two persons together. I could have never done what I'm doing now if I didn't have a good partner. And she would have never done what she's doing now if she didn't have a good partner. Let's make sure I put that out there. Write this down. Whenever the Bible talks about partnership, he's talking about partnership first and foremost with God. Partnership with God. So you will see whenever the Bible talks about partnership, I'll give you the definition of it in a bit. Whenever he's talking about partnership through the Bible, it's talking about partnership with God. You will see in a bit that partnership is about profit. So you will never come into partnership with God and there is nothing in it for you. So partnership with God. He says, he said, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. That's his part of it. But that, and for that to happen, you must be born again. That's your part of it. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. That's your part. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's your part. That you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That's his part. So when I present my body, he gives me his will. When I renew my mind, I manifest his will. You will not come into partnership with God and don't experience his part of the partnership. There's blessings in being in partnership with God. So you, you, would, you would see partnership with God. Then you would see partnership with the people of God. God was in partnership with Israel, the chosen people. And whenever they would walk in obedience, they would experience God's blessing. Whenever they would walk in disobedience, they would experience God's curse, the wrath of God. Moses was in partnership with God's people. David was in partnership with God's people. In the New Testament, the church is God's people and the church is in partnership with the pastor. So we have partnership with God. We have partnership with the people. We have partnership with church. 
We have partnership in marriage, in marriage, in marriage, in marriage. Partnership in marriage. Partnership in marriage. There's no partnership in friendship. When we are in partnership, it takes our relationship to another level. There's nothing in scripture you talk about partnership with friendship. Because a, a, a friend, even though it's stick closer than a brother, it, 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 it takes the relationship whenever you can just walk away from something or walk away from somebody. That's partnership. So partnership takes the relationship to a whole different level. So your partnership in marriage. Dating don't mean anything in the kingdom. Cotton don't mean anything. What means something in the kingdom of God is when you said, I do. Partnership. Man leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they too should become one flesh. Partnership. If me and you dating or courting and now we get a house together, we get this together, we get that together, then you step into partnership. Because now you just can't leave. We signed some contracts. Then you have business partnership. Business partnership. Business partnership. When I go into business with you, there's something in it for me. Business partnership. And whether you believe it or not, some marriages are business partnership. Oh, we're going to talk. We're going to help you. Too. Business partnership. We ain't going to Mm, love nothing, nothing love, mm, love nothing, it's just business. You sleep in your room, I sleep in mine. When we go to the public, we make it look good. Just PR. I lay with who I want to lay with, you lay with who you want to lay with. Just business. Because of the unity in the partnership, you have four men who lift their friend. To God, to Jesus. Tear the roof. Put their friend down to get his miracle from Jesus. It's a whole different level. Write this down. Relationships should make your life better. Write that down. Relationships should make your life better. Relationships should make your life better. Relationships should make relationships should make your life better. Two are better than one. A threefold cord. It's not easily break. Relationships should make your life better. That's why. You know what destroy people? You know what destroy kingdom people? Ignorance. And guess who you're ignorant of? The devil devices. Paul said, I'm not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Some of you have good connections. God put you together with good people. God connect you to an awesome church and you letting the devil play with you. Because the devil knows if you get locked in for real. Come on somebody. The devil knows if that relationship is genuine and everybody doing what they're supposed to do, your life will be better. 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 Relationship from God. When God connect you f- for real. So make your life better. You're going to marry the man and see he was pulling you down before you marry him. You're going to marry the woman and see she wasn't into nothing. And you got you more powerful than God because hallelujah, you're going to change her. You'd have been seeing this woman for three years and she ain't have no intentions of changing. All of a sudden you choose Jesus. You know the person 
in cricket and you still gone in, in partnership with them. You know they were not into it. Okay, you all him. you all him. You're him. What is a partner? Who is a partner? Watch the definition. Either of a pair of people engaged together in the same activity. Don't miss that. Either of a pair of people engaged together in the same activity. That is so good. So good. Let's look at partnership. Let's look at partnership. You all okay looking at that one screen? You comfortable with that? Who are we? What we about? You all right? Wait, look, you all way over there. You all can see this? You all okay with that? But you should be mad. You all should be so mad. You mean to tell me the screen ain't fixed yet? The screen ain't waking? What's going on? You should be hot. Because now your eye got to wake harder. Over here. This screen is for y'all. This screen is for them. That means we only checking for this side of the church. Shake your neighbors and we're going to fix that. I ain't telling you to touch your neighbor too much today because I ain't into that. But we're going to fix that. Because partnership is supposed to make your life better. If you're a part of this church and your life ain't getting no better, go run. Run for your life. But I can tell you this, if there's anointing on my life and you lock into this, you got to be better. There are a few things you need to know before going into partnership. And this is all we're going to deal with today. A few things you and I need to know before we go into partnership. But let me give you this definition of partnership. A partnership is a formal arrangement by two or more parties to manage and operate a business, watch this, and share its profits. And he called for his partners. Oh man, you all missed the text. And when the fish got in the net, and the net was so big and full, he called for his partners. Oh! That's why your life's supposed to be better. They had already give up washing their nets. God used their boat. Cast your nets. Over in the sea, he casts his net. <laughs> the fish find the net. Where were they? And the thing about it is, this in the day, they fish at night. So he said, we were toiling all night, we caught nothing. Jesus shows up in the day and said, lend me your boat. Because where there's night or day, when I'm ready to get something to you, I'm going to get it to you. I don't need man's approval. I don't need man's uh, uh, affirmation. When I'm ready to get it to you, I'll get it to you whether day or night. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Whether out of season or in a season. Whether they in you, support you, don't support you. When I'm ready to get it to you, all I need you to do is obey me and I'll get it to you. Hallelujah. He said, cast your net in the day. Because Jesus knows where your blessing is. The thing about it is he's God. He could command the fish to find your net. And I say God is going to command some people to find you. God is going to command some doors to open for you. God is going to command a blessing on your life. Can I get somebody to open their mouth and give God a praise? Because a commanded blessing. Oh God, I felt that. It's coming in your direction. Throw your net. And he throws his net. And his net begin to break. And he calls and beckons for his partners. Because relationships are to make your life 
better. And you do what you're supposed to do and the person do what they're supposed to do. And both of you going in the same direction. Hallelujah. It's supposed to make your life better. I told a young lady, don't marry. I don't go around telling people who to marry and who what not to marry. and who to, I don't do that. I don't do that. Don't come and ask me who to marry. Now, if the prophetic rests on me, like it did a few times, it don't happen too much. I say, y'all connected, y'all too? I saw it happen. I told, I, told, I told my wife, if she marry him, he gonna pull her down. She was on her way, doing things, and soon as she married a fellow, she went, whoosh! Because when God connects you, <laughs> and everyone doing what they're supposed to do, partnership, genuine, authentic, God-ordained partnership ought to make your life better. He beckons for his partners. And they were able to benefit from his overflow. Ah, you get close to me, my overflow will affect your life. Oh, bless his name. You get close to somebody that is anointed, the anointing got to fall on you. You hug someone that smells good, all of a sudden, glory to God, that sin going to get on you. You hug someone that, is, that smell bad, that sin going to get on you. You connected to someone that got favor on their life, favor will rest on you. I came by to tell somebody, get ready. God is going to connect you to something or someone that's going to change your life for the rest of your life. Can somebody open their mouth and give God a praise in this church? Relationships ought to make your life better. Two are better than one. And the four men grabbed the mat, unified, lift their friend. Don't hang with nobody who ain't about lifting you. Well, what a time. Let me come over here. Let me come over here. Some of you all settling for being on that level you're on. Some of you are settling for being right there, living right there, driving what you drive. It works on my nerve to see people just want to look good, look the part. Your season for faking it until you make it is over. It's time for you to manifest. It works. It grieves me to see persons who have been in the presence for years, be a, be, being around the knowledge and information for years, but their life is in the same place. How in the world you and I could be in the same church, hearing the same message, getting the same principles, watching the man of God go from glory to glory, and your life in the same place. I rebuke that stagnation off you in Jesus name. I rebuke that poverty from off your life. I rebuke that procrastination out of you and I declare you should begin to progress and prosper in every area of your life. If my pastor can get it, I'm going to get it. If my sister next to me, only who following the principle can get it, I can get it too. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I say God's going to bring people in your life that's going to lift you. If you don't get healed from that offense and allow the spirit of familiarity to stop controlling your life, you will miss your moment. God's been good to me. Been good to my wife. For me to show up places now, it means something. Where else was there? Just for me to show up and endorse your thing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Some people get there show up. Some others, when they show up, it means something. 
I declare when you show up, it's going to mean something. Whenever I give you this platform, that should mean something. Don't take that for granted. If the man of God give you the platform, if we open a door for you, that should mean something. One friend made one call and connect me to a billionaire. I wish I could get somebody in here who dare to open their mouth and give God a price. God is going to bring people in your life that's going to lift you. I feel like running. Well, not me, me, me being connected to a billionaire don't mean I get nothing. The connection might just mean God is saying to you, this is how I think about you. Oh, I wish I could come over here and talk. It just may mean this is how I think about you. Because I'm going to connect you, hallelujah, to what's in you. I just said something, y'all miss it. I won't come down there. I said, I'm going to connect you to what's in, what's in you. And when you see the kind of people that are being drawn to you, hallelujah, if it's positive, give God praise. If it's negative, work on what you need to work on because there's some people you don't need in your space. And I wish I could talk to you. And if they're being attracted to you, that means something is on the inside of you that is attracting them. And if it's not positive, why? Work on you and change the way you operate and think so that God can bring some people in your life to take you to another level. Shake your neighbor just the second touch your neighbor. Say God's going to bring people in your life that's going to lift you. Be careful who you lay with. Be careful who you run with. If they're pulling you down, say may the Lord watch between me and you whilst we absent one from another. I need people in my life that's going to lift me. Some of you don't have to be struggling the way you're struggling. You're too proudful. I could do this by myself. John had to prepare the way for Jesus. Elijah had to prepare the way for Elijah. God will always have some door, somebody that will open a door for you. That will connect you to the next season of your life. Stop sitting back there talking about I could do this by myself. I want a body get no credit. The devil is a liar. I'm going to be here in my small corner and I in mine. I want to get in some big corners. I want to get around some big tables. I want to get around some anointed people. Can somebody open their mouth and give God glory in here? I declare by the power of the spirit of God he's going to bring some people who are going to lift you I'm going to lift you to the next opportunity lift you to the next season lift you to the next blessing lift you to the next overflow hallelujah they lift him put him down in the presence of Jesus and his life was changed I go to, this is my nephew, Stan nephew. That's your wife. Stan wife. They have a little spot. I don't know a little spot, that's a big spot. They have a spot. I stopped there yesterday to his spot. He said, Apostle, he don't call me uncle. Call me apostle. He said, Apostle, before you came, the, the day before, he said, A tourist walked from the boat to come and get food from me. Watch this. Don't clap yet. He goes back and he comes back again after he ate the first piece of food. And he brought come back and he bought a next set. He said, the man said, now he down time. The man said, he smell 
the fragrance, the food from downtown. And he followed, I'm saying something prophetic. He followed a scent. He followed the scent. And the scent landed him to his place. The word for about a hundred of you, if you'll shout, God is increasing your scent. Well, what a time. <clears throat> Give me something to put on the altar, son. Give me something to put on the altar. That's a word for me. Oh, give me something to put on the shanda bohoshaya. Give me something to put on the altar. I ain't playing with this. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Okay, okay, okay. That's the hundred. That's it. Let's try this again. That's it. That, that, that's it. That, that, that's the hundred. No, y'all ain't y'all playing. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. The prophetic word is, you didn't hear it. God is increasing your scent. God is increasing your anointing then. That's why you need to be in the prayer these three nights. Because one of the prayer, God said, pray that my presence increase on your life. And the Lord said, I'm increasing your scent. And when I increase your scent, people will be attracted to what's on your life. It's going to blow. You better hear the words coming out of your daddy mouth. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to increase the scent on you. Hallelujah. People you don't know, this is going to Scratch your head when you see them call you and want to connect with you and call the meeting for you because I'm getting ready to promote you. Shake your neighbors and get ready. Your scent is increasing. The anointing is increasing. The presence of God is increasing on your life. I wish I could get them my hunch what I'm looking for. If you're sitting next to somebody who can't praise God but you, you sit next to jealousy. You need to sit next. You sit next to somebody who tight and jealous. You need to find somebody else. God doing some major things in this man life. Right here. You know what he say? Send me pictures every now and then of what God doing. Look, look, look. What God doing in his life? You know, there's Paul Bevins. You know him? What you do? You got a bookstore? Where's your bookstore? Get with Paul Bevins. He's going to help promote you the bookstore. Sorry. <laughs> Paul is saying, Paul said, Dad, big grown man calling me Dad. He said, Dad. He said, I only am where I am today because of you, because of the teaching, because of your anointing that's on your life. I say to a hundred of y'all and y'all ain't responding that God is increasing the scent on you. I say God is increasing the glory and the presence on your life. And people who don't like you, they'll find you. People who are trying to kill you, they'll find you. People who are trying to block you, they'll find you. Get ready. God's going to find your scent. I wish I could get somebody. Didi, you shout too late. You get up too late, Didi. You get up too late. You need to try that one more time. Sit down, Didi. Sit down, Didi. God is increasing your scent. That's what I'm saying. You're going to look the part. You're going to walk the part. They're going to smell you when you walk in the door. There's going to be something on your life. You know what favor means? Favor means attraction. Hallelujah. Favor. When you walk in a place and you have on the right perfume or cologne, people want to know what is that you're wearing. I want you to tell them, this is glory I'm wearing. This is favor I'm wearing. God's going to put favor on your children. God's going to put favor. Don't give me that. We're going to get in trouble. Don't give me that. You ain't want that in my hand. That's an assignment for me. With my hands, you jump on your feet and say it's increasing. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all who came from New York, get ready. You came here one way, you're going back another. Hallelujah, get ready. Hallelujah, God's going to make your name great. He's going to recognize you. He's going to bless you. He Just be with me these few weeks. You, you could go to your other church after. If you don't go to no church, you be with. Sacrifice these few weeks. 
be with me. Let me pour in you. This anointing that's on me, gonna come on you. I said, this anointing that's on my life. Just be with, these, be with me these three nights. I ain't got the physical strength, but I got to push. I want you to be in here. Let me pray you into the next season. Let me pray you into the next moment. Let me pray you into the next breakthrough. Hallelujah. Say he is increasing my scent. And you know what he said to me? He said, Apostle. I said, so what is my price? He said, you ain't got none. He said, because every time you come here, people has just start coming. Oh, bless his name. That's the power of connection. That's the power of honor. Who anointing you honor? Hallelujah, that thing will come on you. Can somebody shout glory to God in this crowded church? Can I give you, can I give you five things quickly? Let me give you five things quickly. Five things you need to know before going into partnership. Five things. Five things you need to know before going into partnership. The first thing you need to know before going into partnership with anything, anybody, you got to know who you're going in partnership with. What the person is about. What the company is about. Get to know their character, their vision, and their purpose. Do a background check. Paul encouraged Timothy. The, Paul encouraged the people to get to know them. He says in 1 Thessalonians 2 and 12, And we urge you, brethren, to know those who labor among you and over you in the Lord. Don't get caught up on no, don't get excited. You want me to come into partnership with you? You want me and you get married? You want me invest in you? You want me to join your church? That's why we call you partners. Then we take you through a course, a class, so you can know the vision of the church. Don't get to know my suit. <coughs> Don't get to know my car. Get to know who's driving me, not what I'm driving. Look at that. This mean nothing. I could go on my knees now and pray and fall lay out prostrate in this. Mean nothing to me. Someone give me a car key, say, I just love the way you preach. <clears throat> you have to know. What are you about? What are they about? See, woman, woman, no woman, you know. You could look in her eye and see if she is abused. You're all women. You could look in her eye and see if she's happy. You could watch her face and see she, if she's happy. You could look at her and see if she's faking. Get to know us. Stop laying with people you just meet, stop being cheap. You're being too cheap with yourself. You can't be no one night stand when you're looking for long time relationship. Why you cheat choose to be the third woman? The third? Oh, Pastor, you know I can't find no man. This new age now. You, what you mean? He got his wife. And he find his wife and he ain't leaving his wife for you. And you're talking foolishness, but you're going to say, no. Stay single and make your single life meaningful. I'm talking to men and women. Single and be happy, man. Get to know them. 
I tell people just go online. Stop falling in love so fast until you're ignorant. Did you get to know him? Smell him. Smell her. When I say smell, that means discern. Worship on them. Go to the house when they ain't expecting you. Pick them up late from work. See if the wolf and the werewolf going to come out. You got to see her mad. You got to see her mad. You got to see him mad. You got to see him with no, see her with no hair on her head. Without the wigs. Without the eyelash. Without the... I don't know. You want me to connect to you? What are you about? What's your purpose? What's the vision for this thing? You want me to sow into this? You want me to give into this? What is it about? Let me help you all, man. I made some bad mistakes, bad decisions, man. You don't have to go down that road. Boys, thank God he loved me so much that he is restoring my years, boy. He's restoring my wasted years. Get to know the people. Don't just quick to throw your money. Quick to free up. Quick to bring them in your bedroom. Go to lunch with them, even if you gotta pay for it. Pick their brain, yes. You investing in getting to know them. And if you sit with them long enough, you will hear what they are about. You ain't want that one. Okay, so the first one is, the first one is, uh, know who you are going into partnership with. Here is this one now. What do you bring to the partnership? What I bring to the partnership. What I bring. Know what you bring to the partnership. I know what I bring to her. But she must also know, this is the third thing, she must also know what she bring to me. You want me to go into partnership? What you bring in? Jesus brought the spiritual elements. We're going to talk further about that. Peter brought, watch this, the net, the boat. Jesus brought that which was spiritual. Peter brought that which was natural. I got a good friend who tell me, he said, man, you bring more value to me than I bring. And he got plenty of money. I said, what do you mean I bring more? He said, you bring the spiritual part. He said, you pray for me. That's more valuable than the money or the things. Man, he got more sense than y'all who in church every Sunday. Paul said, if I give you that which is spiritual, is it a bad thing for you to give me that which is carnal? So I have to know what the person bring. I have to know what I bring. I have to get to know the individual or the place. Then the fourth thing I need to know, are we in agreement? Write that down. Are we in agreement? We going in the same direction? Are we going in the same direction? It's one of the reasons why I left for fellowship. Because this is what we start off with. This was the plan. And now you turn the corner. That ain't what I signed up for. You want to learn that. That's one of the things that destroy good partnership. You and the man agree on this and all of a sudden he wake up one morning and say he going this way. The woman bring, this is what you know she bring. This is what you all know each other bring in courting, in dating. So you go get married. And all of a sudden she wake up a whole different person. He wake up a different person going in a different direction. We must be in agreement if we're coming into partnership.
Who love this church? Who love this church? Who love this church? Who love this church? If the person next to you lift, they lift their hand and say, girl, you missing something. Tell them, boy, you missing something. You missing something, but you'll have better sense if you come to live in water. I tell my musicians all the time, this can't just be no gig for you. You this close to this glory and this just a gig? Do you mean is rush up on me every now and then and say, Dad, I ain't give you nothing in a long time. Boom. That's them power shake. Them power shake. Little boy, little fella. No, no little man, sorry. <laughs> Still, start letting me see your little man. <laughs> little man, powerful little man. Powerful little man. Some of you been around me for years wouldn't give me nothing. You, do, you get too familiar. You think I need nothing. But that little man right there, God will always bring people in your life who honor you. And, and come on now. And then some of you who give online. I know y'all. It has come to me. Watch this so you got to be. Are we going in the same direction? Are we going in the same direction? If, if they were lifting Janet, if they were lifting the, 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 the mat... And one was pulling one way and the other was pulling one way. You think they was going to get up on the roof? They lifting the thing together. The fifth one. We finish. Here is this one. What's the profit? What's the profit? The first one is what? Okay. The second one is what? Know what you bring. And the third one is what? What they bring, right? What's the sec fourth one? The agreement, there must be agreement. And the fifth one is, what's the profit? What am I getting out of this? What is in this for me? Come on, man. You think God have a problem that you want to know what is in it for you? You want me to join your church? What is in it for me? You want to marry me? What is in it for me? You want me and you come into con covenant and... Come into partnership, what's the profit? If I give 50 and you give 50, what it's supposed to be? 70? 30? Or it's supposed to be 50 50? Oh, come on, y'all act like y'all know what y'all say talking about, man. Profit. Wherever there's performance, there ought to be profit. Okay, let me give you all scripture because you're all over spiritual, overly spiritual. Let me give you, oh, no, 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 giving it. Giving it. Giving it law of reciprocity. Giving it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness, here it is, shall be filled. Stop your foolishness, but I ain't looking for nothing in return. When I give, I'm looking for something. God, who are you going to use to bless me? Hallelujah. And I need point of reference. And the Lord will say, that's the seed you sowed two years ago. That's the seed you sowed two weeks ago. Come on now. You think I'm going to be in two days of prayer when I could have been doing something and I ain't going to get something out of the deal? That's why he shows up 530 and he said, boop, here it is, a major door. And I came by to tell y'all who are going to shout and give God a praise. Get ready for profit. You are about to be rewarded. He said, cast your bread upon the waters. For in many days, you'll find it. Profit. When we walk the aisle together and we say, we do, that ain't no grinning time. That's covenant. And I expect for you to live up to your part of the bargain. And you should expect for me to live up to my part of the bargain. And when both of us come together, hallelujah, glory to God. One can chase a thousand. Two, two could put ten thousand to flight. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. Hallelujah. It cannot just be about sex and having babies. We got to build something. We got to buy something. We got to invest in something. We got to experience increase in our lives. The only thing you get out of the relationship it's babies. Babies are costly. I've got to be.
be more than that. I'm 57 in the next couple months. I made up in my mind I'm not going to be in any relationship that's not going to give back to me. And I'm talking money. If I call you, you should call me. If I send you a text, you should respond. Come on, somebody. If I'm praying for you, you should pray for me. If I give to you, you should give back to me. If the church vision is manifesting, hallelujah, and you see it before your eyes, you should not hold back on the thing. Because you have no excuse. Why you could go in this country, glory to God, hallelujah, and get a man of God that's pouring in to one of the major organizations in this country, giving himself, glory to God, hallelujah, then come to church on Sunday and give you word to help your life better and live in an exemplary life, hallelujah, you don't look down when my name is called, hallelujah, your man of God is an example, his wife is an example, can I get somebody in here, my mother-in-law lives with me, my mother honor and recognize me, I got leaders who are examples, and you playing with this thing, let's do this right, 